probably one of those days. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take your hymnal and open it to... Don't go real far, but... All right. Um, open it to, I think... Hold on a second. This is something I don't think we do very often. 137, maybe? Yeah, 137. So I would like us to read the scripture together out loud. Some of you probably know this by heart and don't even need it, but I would ask you to re join me in reading this prayer and then don't close your hymnal, okay? So this is um, the 23rd Psalm. You ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, I see some of you did not need to read it. This is just not something that I learned by heart as a child. If you look on the page before it, and I'm not going to ask you to sing this, but I don't think this is a song that you know or have sung. It's, um, it's a musical version of the scripture that we just read, so I'm going to ask you to listen to it and hope I don't make any mistakes. Could you give me a C, middle C? Uh, oh, wow, that feels really high. <laughs> the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, e'en for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, Yet will I fear no will, for thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore, my dwelling place shall be. Isn't that a pretty song? Yeah. So, so you guys, maybe we'll learn it one of these days. Maybe we'll sing that together. So, so sheep. Wait, where are my sheep? You know that there are sheep in here every week, right? Where'd they go? Uh-oh. I see a note. Looks like somebody left a note. Ransom? Let me see what this says. Clues to find sheep. Whiff and poof. Whiff and poof song. I wonder if that's a... Is that a hint? Whiff and poof? 
Let me see, with whose song? Let me get back up here where I belong. Whiff and poof, you know whiff and poof? We're poor little lambs who have lost our way. Ba, ba, ba. We're little black sheep who have gone astray. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, clues for... <gasps> I have it. I have it. There are clues here to help us find the sheep, but... What am I going to do? I'm supposed to be up here leading the service and preaching. I can't leave and go looking for eight sheep. I need help. Who's going to help me find my sheep? There are clues here. If I had at least four volunteers, it would be great because somebody's got to stay in here and sing with me. But, oh, shh. I need at least four people, but if only four people come and volunteer, then you've got to look for two sheep because you're going to get two clues. But I, I'll tell you what, don't get quite up yet. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, there's two things you need to know about these clues. The person who, who got my sheep away from their, their waiting place can't spell worth a darn. And either these clues are over obvious or not. So read them carefully. And I'll tell you how much time you have. I can get them. It's, it ain't pretty, but I need to do I need more people. This, two people cannot find eight sheep and three verses of singing. Come on, folks. Out of your worship is participation. Okay. Okay. Now, I can tell you to make this easier that the sheep have not left the building and they have not left this floor. And so... If you read the clues carefully, you'll be able to find them. Um, and don't be afraid to open doors. Let me see. I don't know. Here's one for you. Don't leave yet. Because while you're gone, um, you have just, like I said, three verses, maybe four verses. The rest of us are going to be singing acapulco, acapella. Um, while you're out looking for these sheep, and when you find them, if you'll come and bring them to the cross where they belong, and then we'll all sing, guess what? Amazing grace. Guess why? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Okay, just, just trying to help here. So here's one for you, Matthew. Are you two going to be a team? Um. <laughs> there you go. Here's one for you, Ron. Some of you are going to get two. Some of you may not. There's two for you, Matthew. There's one for you, and... Okay, go. You don't have a lot of time. Just read your clues carefully. Remember, they're anywhere from the front door, anywhere on this floor. I don't think so either. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna what are we gonna sing? What are we gonna sing? Um, the first, our first song is. Our first song is Open Your Hymnals to page 245. 245. Okay. All right, 245, are you there? We're just going to we're just going to sing the first verse, okay? The first Noel the angel did say, What she served him for shepherds in fields where they lay, in fields where they hid, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No. Page 128. 
He leadeth me. 128. Are you there? He leadeth me. Oh, blessed thought of words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whatever I do, wherever I'll be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He So the other one, I don't think is I don't think is in your hymnal. You all know I have decided to follow Jesus, right? I mean, I have decided to follow Jesus, but I thought we would sing that. Sorry. Is it here? No, it's not in the hymnal. I have decided to follow Jesus. Though none go with me, still I will follow the cross before me, the world behind me. So let's do that. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though, though not go with me, still I I see sheep gathering together. I see people working together. That is really awesome. One last song, and then they ought to be in here. If you turn in your hymnals to page 227, I know we sang this Christmas Eve. I know it's not a song that you know really, really well. But um, 227, the friendly beasts, verse 4. Verse 4, 227. I see a woman with a mission. Okay. I said the sheep with curly horns. I gave him my wool for his blanket warm. He wore my coat on Christmas morn. Caitlin, are they about ready? Have they found all the sheep? Well, tell them to bring in what they found, and maybe I can help, and we can sing um, Amazing Grace. If anybody's stuck. Bring what you have. If anybody still needs help, well, you found it, Ron. Was that easy or was that? 
Yeah, well, it's a sheep, and it's been eavesdropping on all our meetings in there, right? We were debating. Yeah. yeah. Looks like he did. Looks like he did. No? So what's that? How many? Did you find? The, did you find? Oh, I didn't think there was. All right. Did you find the one that was cold? I found two. In the front room? The, front the one that was cold? No. Did you find the one where lambs learn? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, just give me whatever you don't have. I don't know whether I got either one of them. Oh, okay. Um. <coughs> oh. Who got... Oh. Wasn't that the one for jail? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He got that one. Okay. Thank you. So you got both of these? I do. Okay. Yes? Okay. And you got that. Um, this one, that one was in the refrigerator. Oh, out here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which? Still haven't figured out this. Okay. If you go... <laughs> do you know where the, f the food pantry donations go? Near the door? Out that hallway? Okay. Out that door. And just, you'll see it. All right, it looks like y'all did pretty good. Thank you. Caitlin, you missed one, but that's okay. She, this one also likes music, and I didn't, this one is extra special, and I didn't want her to go too far. So she was over in the corner listening to music. Okay, so um, let's sing. Uh, 378, Amazing Grace, three verses. You found it. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Matthew. 378, you can stand if you're able, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, be present with us as we gather to reflect and wonder and share. Be present with us, O God. Lead us and guide us and have mercy on us. For it is in your Son's name that we make this prayer. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Come now to the time of sharing of our joys and concerns. Are there any joys for the week? Elaine? Well, my joy is I can see better out of one eye. <laughs> Elaine's joy, if you didn't hear her, was she can see better out of one eye. That's awesome. But my concern is, um, I had a friend call me this week and ask to be put on a chair change. She's having major surgery on her legs. Mm -hmm. And it's going to need time in the hospital with rehab and also at home. Plus,
Angie Krim bring in our prayers? I'm asking prayers for my granddaughter. Uh, she's having a lot of health issues since she had her baby. So if she would keep her in her prayers, please. Thank you. Uh, prayers for Angie Krimring and the family. Don't forget to keep Scott and Elaine Shedden in prayer. Um, Scott called me the day before yesterday. He says, um, when you call Elaine, make it 8.30, 9 o'clock at night because she gets a little owly then. <laughs> he said it's probably some of it is because she isn't active enough. The others, I wonder about being sundowners, kind of. Now, I talked to her last night and the night before for 20, 25 minutes, and she was real good but there were things that she kept reaching for that she couldn't come up with so and linda allen rufus's wife um the last i knew she was planning her funeral so please keep them in prayer text from Mary I wrote she's in the car and so I sent her a, a couple of messages and asked her if she had any prayer requests and she said she's thankful to enjoy the service and the beautiful day out there and it, it makes me glad that we still have continued that ability to offer because you never know individual circumstances um, it's great that we can extend the ministry of the church in this way and be connected so I'm also glad to know she's there so that we can kind of loop her into things. Are there others? <laughs> if there are not any others we'll go to our prayer song his name is wonderful i will open with prayer please feel free to lift up those in need and then i will close Our gracious and loving God, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Today is a special day, Lord. We thank you for our mothers. May your love, the love you gave us through her, be showered on her today and through all of eternity. We thank you for our joys and we pray for the needs of our people. We pray for those spoken needs and those needs that maybe no one on earth knows about. But you know, Lord, and you invite us to bring everything to you in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your every blessing on us. We have enough to eat. We're safe. We have beds to sleep in. So many people don't. Be with the people of Ukraine that are 
Wondrous and amazing God, you are the source of our being. It is you who formed us, named us, and first loved us. Then you pass that love on to our mothers. You know our needs and our prayers before we utter them. It is an honor and privilege not only to bring our own needs, but the needs of others and desires before you. And so we pray for the needs of individuals, families, our communities, our leaders, our world, and of course, our moms. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. I need, excuse me there. That's good. I need just a moment, <clears throat> excuse me, to get to the right pages because I didn't get to do that beforehand. So John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. Now we've been all the way through Jesus' arrest and trial and execution, crucifixion, resurrection, and, and now we're back to um, Jesus um, as the Good Shepherd in John chapter 10. So page 1358 for the youth. 1358. And actually 1359 because we start at verse 22. Are you there? No. 1359. Okay. Um, then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And then to Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. And this is on, starts on page 1399. 1399. Okay? Starts at verse 32. As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas who was paralyzed. Well, I'm going to keep going. Who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up. All those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lida was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, 
And when he arrived and was, he was taken upstairs to the room, all the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Well, holy God, be present with us as we wrestle and reflect and wonder. Fill us with understanding. Fill us with question. Fill us with hope and mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for your joy that is our strength. And we make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, um, last week, at the end of the Gospel, after Jesus quizzes Peter and asks him if he loves him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Um, and he, you know, that back and forth, do you love me? Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Tend my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. So one of the questions that I wanted us to kind of puzzle out with today is, was Jesus just talking to Peter? Or is that a word also for us? Are you and I, you uh, collectively as a congregation, you and I individually, are we also, or maybe I want to say, are we not also called to the work and ministry of tending and feeding sheep and sheep and lambs. Um, many years ago, I'd, I had already responded to my call to ministry. My stuff was already in process. And I don't know about you, but I read bulletin boards everywhere. If I visit a church, I read a bulletin board. If I'm in a grocery store and there's a bulletin board, I read that. And I found this, this, one, this one note that just struck a chord with me because all it said was, wanted someone to feed sheep and other animals. And I, I just couldn't help thinking, I wonder if you called that number, who might answer? You and I are called to that work of caring for God's sheep. Hence, some of you were good enough and humored me. I was prepared to say, if nobody wants to do this, we can stare at each other for three minutes. So I'm so grateful that you, that you spared me from that kind of social guffaw. What was it like to, to go off with these goofy clues? Were they easy? Were they too easy? Were they hard? I think they were all three. Okay. <laughs> easy, too easy, and hard, huh? Very easy, and some of them turned out, where could that be? Yeah, yeah, okay. Did, how did you feel doing that? Fun. Okay. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? I mean, it's not how we usually do church. You want to come in and sit down and be fed <laughs> and uh, go home and, and never be put on the spot. And I could hardly blame you for that, but you know. Any other thoughts on looking for sheep, trying to figure out where they might be? or Frustrating. Frustrating. Mm-hmm. Okay, especially when you knew where at least one of them was and it wasn't your clue, right? I was so glad you didn't come in and see the sheep sitting there. It, it, that one said, I like to hear music, uh, but I try not to get underfoot. <laughs> but I, I was hoping that Lorene didn't come in and say, oh, what's that sheep doing there? Because <laughs> you know what I would have said? One of the dangers in this little exercise is that we allow ourselves to think that we are called to look for the lost and save them. Because you know whose job it is to look for the lost and save them? It's Jesus' job. It's the work of God, the work of the Holy Spirit. And yet we are still called to this work of nurturing, nourishing, feeding, tending, supporting, looking for... 
I, I guess for me, the danger is that we allow that to be a watered down, oh, I'm going to go to my neighbor because she's lost and I'm going to tell her how to find Jesus. And you might get a door slammed in your face. And it might seem to you, well, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? But if you don't have a relationship with your neighbor, it's not going to work. Years ago, a, a friend from church and I had a real hard time with a woman in our prayer group, and we really, we, we really wanted to tell her off. We wanted to fix her. We wanted to change her. We wanted to mold her in the image of what we thought a respectable church person should do and not do. And so we went to her mother. You know how you go to somebody else for an ally? We went to her mom for help, and she said, you cannot talk to this girl until she knows that you love her. And we didn't, and we couldn't, and yeah, we were put in our place. But in general, the only person who you are going to be able to talk to about Jesus, convince about Jesus, is someone who knows you, has a relationship with you, and sees your integrity. This might be a dicey example, but I will tell you that, you know, I'm a city girl, and I married a Western Pennsylvania hunter. And so when we got married, the only firearms I'd ever seen were in a magazine, and now they were on my side of the bed. We were married for four years before I let him teach me how to shoot. Because in those four years, I got to observe his integrity with firearms, that ammunition was kept separately. All the firearms were kept locked up, double locked, and they weren't together. Um, after four years of realizing that he was not going to play, was not going to point a gun at me and Jess or anything else, and he wasn't going to be careless, then I let him teach me. So I'm kind of hoping maybe that analogy helps, because if your neighbors have known you to be disreputable, gossipy, whatever else, they're not going to hear a word you want to say to them about Jesus. One of the biggest things we have to do in, in going and seeking people that are not in church at all, that maybe don't have any use for church, is have a relationship. Have a relationship with them and let the Holy Spirit guide you in sharing your story with them Pray for them and look for ways that you see God at work in their lives because only that relationship and only that partnership with Jesus can the work of shepherding happen. Um, and really, and I'm, I'll tell you that I'm reading a book. I haven't gotten very far with this, but I'm reading a book called I Am a Follower, and it's written by um, Leonard Sweet, who's the United Methodist elder uh, professor, book author, and he said that really, you know, there's a lot of emphasis in the churches today on leadership, and it's the wrong conversation, because we shouldn't be trying to be leaders, we should be trying to be followers, um, following Jesus and allowing the words of Jesus and the work of Jesus and the presence of God in our lives teach us how to respond, how to reach out. There is a um, a saying that probably comes from the rabbis, and I, and I love this expression, it's, um, it's a blessing. And the blessing is, may you be covered in the dust of your rabbi's sandals. Now think about the disciples and Jesus and, and everybody else wearing sandals and walking in this dusty, dusty dirt. The idea behind the blessing is that you are following so closely that the dust and dirt that gets picked up from their walking hits you. May we be following Jesus so closely that that impacts all of our relationships, all of our behaviors. I, I want to say a, a couple of things about Dorcas. I love the story of Tabitha. A um, couple things. Maybe the simplest is, um, the, the scripture refers to her as a disciple. Do you, do you know what's unusual about that? Hmm? She's a woman, and she is the only woman who is named or labeled as a disciple. 
Now, I think that's really unfortunate because we have a natural assumption that the disciples were the men when, in fact, there were many women who followed Jesus, many women disciples. But for whatever reason, Tabitha is named as a disciple, and that's really cool. Um, but the thing about Tabitha that's so unique, she's a very ordinary woman, right? And it's amazing that, you know, sometimes we read scripture and we don't even know one person's name, and we know she has two different names. We know her as Tabitha, and we know her as Dorcas. Um, but what we know about her as a disciple, she's not out preaching. She's not raising people from the dead. She's not being Peter. She's not, I don't know if you name a list of things, disciples and Bible times and the stories did. She wasn't doing any of them. She was sewing. And she was making clothes for widows. What I hope you remember about widows in Jesus' time is that nine times out of ten, Maybe not a good statistic, but an easy one. Nine times out of ten, widows, they had, excuse me, no male family member to support them, were financially destitute. There there was no social security. Marriage was social security. No matter how many times you got married, if your husband died, you were in great peril because who was going to take care of you? And this is the group of people that she took care of with some woven material and needle and thread, and she made clothes and coverings that protected them. And it was the widows who responded when she died, and the widows who gathered around her bed and prepared her body. And it was the widows who called Peter and said, look, she made this, she made that, she made that. Just ordinary, isn't it? I mean, if you sew, it's not ordinary because I'm still not sure I should get within 10 feet of my machine. And I, you know, I am not somebody who sews. But in the scheme of things, it's as ordinary as making bread or making breakfast or anything else. And Dorcas, a disciple, used the ordinary, ordinariness of her life and the things that she had available to her and she cared for the sheep. She was a disciple who followed Jesus. And the most amazing thing about her life was that she was a follower who cared for others. Now, the other thing about the story of Dorcas that I often think is, it's going to sound really awkward, maybe, but you know, if either she had been able to teach someone else how to do what she did, or if other people in the community had followed her example and said, look, Dorcas made clothes for her. I wonder if I, I've got material, I've got thread, I could do some weaving, maybe I could help. That looks like fun. But it seems like nobody else did that, and so they desperately needed Dorcas. But I think if somebody else had followed in the same way Dorcas had, They could have let the woman rest in peace. But they couldn't. They desperately, desperately needed her. In churches, sometimes people leave. Certainly sometimes people die. People move away. It's really helpful when other people step up. It's really helpful for the whole congregation to know that the work of ministry is all of our jobs, that when it comes to discipleship, there's no such thing as having paid our dues, been there, done that. Now there is such a thing as aging. There is such a thing as maybe not certainly, at a certain point in your life, you can't do some of the things that you used to do. But if you're still here, there is something you can still do. You can love like Jesus. You can pray like Jesus. You can pick up a phone. You can visit somebody. You can raise your voice in song. You can contribute to the support of the ministry of the church. I am going to miss you. I love you. I love being your pastor. But I also hope you wouldn't be offended to hear me say seven more weeks. And I'm kind of looking forward to what July 1st is going to bring. But not because I think my life after being a pastor, caring for a flock, is going to be sleeping in and, you know, 
having Roger stand over me with a fan and dropping grapes into my mouth one by one. I have Pastor Nate has already reached out to me and asked me, will you teach a class? Will you help me do such and such? Uh, Will you call somebody that you know who's dying? So I know that I'm not looking at a life of luxury. I don't want it to be a life of luxury. I am a little tired, truth be told. And, And so this turning point is coming, and fortunately with our system, somebody else steps up because they're appointed. But when you're in the pew and you're holding an office or leading a ministry or doing something else, look around for someone you can teach. Look around for someone you can say, watch me and work with me and let me me help you learn how to do this. Um, It's ministry is all of our jobs and we need to get the notion, the watered down notion of church membership out of our heads. Yes, churches need members, but not nearly as much as they need disciples, not nearly as much as we need followers of Jesus who will live like Jesus, love like Jesus, lead like Jesus, take someone by the hand and listen to their story like Jesus and not be influenced by the the broader culture, the political culture, the community culture, because the one who sets the example, who sets the pace, who sets the tone for us, is Jesus, the Savior, our shepherd. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, I pushed you this morning. Thank you for humoring me. Thank you for playing along. But I hope that it also gives you a sense of what does it mean to care for the sheep? And can you just sit in your pew Or do you have a responsibility to go looking as God leads you to reach out with God's love? Thank you. Our closing, oh, no, no, him, offering. That's what I meant, offering. Gracious God, everything we have is your gift to us, and we offer back to you a portion of those blessings. Receive these offerings from the hands of your children, your servants, and multiply them for your use and service to your kingdom. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, number 381. And, um, Don't forget to stop and look at the cupcake art and take a cupcake or two.
sometimes you just have those warm feelings of love for, if not all of humanity, your family, your friends, your church family, those, those people in your circle. Don't pat yourself on the back, but open your arms wider because I believe that love, that feeling, that ability is beyond anything we are capable of and comes from God. Remember that wonderful theologian, Oscar Hammerstein II, who wrote, love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. But Paul wrote in Romans, God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we overflow, our cups runneth over with God's love so that we have plenty to share. Go and let your light shine. Let God's love flow through you and be blessed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, I've got recipes and instructions for you, but I need to go make a few copies.